Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Bright Connections. I'm your host, BK. Joining me this week is BK. That's right. I don't have a guest this week. Uh, things got a little hectic. Um, the guy, you know, the person that I originally had scheduled to do it wasn't able to do it. And then I, things kind of fell through with people after that. And so I just sat back to myself and I thought, you know what? Actually, it would be cool to just do a one-on-one, -on -one, a little heart-to-heart -heart with you guys, the listeners, this week. So that's what we're going to do. We're going get to get to know your host, BK, a little bit better. Uh, I want to talk about what I want to talk about, and we're going we're gonna to have a good time. So hopefully, I can be entertaining. I'm not as funny by myself as I am with other people. I'm more of a listener and a reactor and a feed off your, your stuff, and, and I'll you know chime in and, and be a little goofy and weird and funny so we'll see we'll see how we can do but <laughs> so hopefully i can uh if there's some good stuff out here for you and and I hope you guys enjoy so um obviously like i said no guests people have their lives people are busy everyone's busy right now uh, you know certainly myself as well and i just appreciate anyone that that comes on and, and joins me any week you know I, I appreciate their time i know everybody's running around doing their own things. So I really do appreciate it. Anyone that that's willing to come on and join me and, and, and talk with me and, and share some, some positive vibes and some, some bright stories and everything. So thanks again to all my, all my guests so far, looking forward to, to many, many more weeks more with, with you guys. So, all right. So let's get to know BK a little bit, right? So the story of me, um, even from a young age, I've always had a very strong passion for, sports and and video games obviously that's why I'm, I'm doing my streaming now on twitch and and i do my coaching you know in lacrosse and always always had a very strong passion for that i've always been a huge fan of of pittsburgh sports um i've always been a fan of of sports games sports video games and you know other other video games as well so i've always always had a strong passion for those things those are definitely my my hobbies if you will when I was young, I always wanted to be a sports player. Even I always, you know, I always grew up thinking, "Oh, I'm going to be the next uh, Mario Lemieux or, or you know, some some famous sports player." I don't even remember who back then who I really idolized, honestly. But always, you know, always growing up, always was, "Oh, I'm going to be the next big sports player." Yeah. Well, you know, didn't happen. We'll just go there. We'll just we'll just stop it at that. So. Um, and then after, after a while, I, I switched over from being a player to a manager. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, not, not a coach manager, but like a general manager, you know, the, the person who does all the trading and the signing and the contracts and then this, and then that all the behind the scenes business stuff. Um, and that's what kind of made me lean toward what I studied in, in college, which was, um, human resource management. I, I went a little bit more broad with what I studied in college, but, um, you know, I was, I was always fascinated by how these, these general managers can, can finagle contracts and, and do this behind the scenes stuff to make a team successful, you know, staying under a salary cap and, and getting these, these guys that work well together and obviously that, that plays a part in the coach as well, getting the, the people to play together. But you kind of have to know the player when you bring them into the team to, to know, you know, are they going to mesh well? Are they going to be a cog, you know, cogs of, of, a, of a machine? Or are they going to, you know, bat heads a little bit and not get along? So I was always fascinated with that. So, you know, even when I was back to the video games, when I played sports video games, I would always play uh, franchise modes where, and I would, I would love just, going through the off season portion of the, of the franchise modes and just do wheeling and dealing and contract signing and, and this and that. And it just always fascinated me. You know, it just always fascinated me. And then after that, I kind of was like, you know what? I want to hear my voice on the radio. I want to be an announcer. So then I, I wanted to be an announcer, the sports announcer and be, be the next guy going, you know, in baseball, oh, oh, back, 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 and gone, home run, you know, stuff like that, and and be the next uh, um, Mike Lang, 
for hockey than with some crazy sayings and oh he beats him like a red and mule and all these crazy things and, and that was that was my next fascination was was being on the radio or the tv and just announcing sports um i still think it would be cool actually to this day but probably won't happen probably won't happen but we'll see <laughs> but uh then finally after sports announcer i i moved to wanting to be a coach and that's kind of where i ended up now with being a lacrosse coach um just the concept of inspiring people to greater themselves is just amazing to me just taking that burden on yourself to instill not only things in the game but you know, but knowledge you know knowledge of the game but morals and values in life as well for them to take with them and just that concept of being such a huge influence on their lives is absolutely amazing to me and i i, I couldn't be happier you know, it means the world to me so um so that's kind of where i am you know on, on who i wanted to be growing up and and where i am now <clears throat> so i've always i've always been a goofy person from from young age for sure i'm willing to make a fool of myself to make others laugh. I, I really, you know, I'll, I'll act like any, I'll run around circle. When I was young, I remember just playing with other kids, running around like an idiot, just being a goof, which probably most kids are too. But, you know, I just always was willing to, to do something silly to make others laugh. You know, just, just the way I am. I don't, I don't get embarrassed. You know, I don't really get embarrassed. Um, somebody can point and laugh at me and it just, okay, sorry. You know, it doesn't bother me. So no big deal there. No big deal. But I've always, I have no reason to not want to be goofy. I just feel like being goofy exerts happiness and, and exerts just fun into the, to the scenarios. If you're sitting there as a serious Sally and you're just everything's just stern and serious. Ah, come on. You know, what's the, what's the joy in that? So find joy and just be goofy, just be yourself, be goofy. Don't, don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Be yourself, be fun, be goofy, be nerdy, be who you want to be. You know, um, I've always as well, I've always loved singing and dancing. Um, I know Dylan from a couple episodes ago, he calls me the, the human jukebox because I know songs in a heartbeat. Like if we're out at a restaurant or something and a song comes on, I'll just start like silently singing it to myself. And he looks over me and he's like, how do you know this song? I'm just like, I don't know. I just do. And then there's times where I've, I've never even heard a song before. And the, like the first chorus will go through or whatever and it'll come back around the second time and I start singing it or humming it or something and and whoever's with me they're just like how do you know the song and I was like I don't and they're like well how are you singing it I was like I don't know I just picked it up I just it's it's just the thing in my head I just I with music I just get it I just can pick it up I can pick up beats I can pick up um you know words and everything with it and I just I absolutely love singing you know I'm not the best singer but I'm, I'm decent and you know, actually I sing at my church every, every weekend as well. And it just being able to sing and it's just, it's so expressive. It's so, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just awesome. I've always loved singing. I've always, I'm always singing to myself. I'm always singing to others. I just, you find joy in it, find joy in it. You know, even if you're not the best singer, sing, just do it. Music is so powerful. Absolutely. So powerful. There's so much in music to find connection with connection with uh, but there's so much so much to find in music just absolutely just let loose sometimes listen to music just dance around the house you know in your underwear whatever get, get crazy with it but sing dance have fun have fun um even from a young age i've always had a smile on i've always been laughing um, it really hasn't just been because of bright connections. I'm not just putting on a front just for you guys being this happy go lucky always guy. That truly is me. That truly, truly is me. I'm always, always laughing, always smiling, always trying to bring joy to people. You know, I, I'm, I'm always thinking of others happiness first. And, I, and people have always told me, dude, you got to think of yourself sometimes. And you know what? I am thinking of myself when I'm thinking of others. 
Um, you know, as long as others are happy, that's what makes me happy. There's times where I know that, that someone else isn't happy and I will literally like get sick to my stomach. Like I, I get so upset when I know somebody else is not happy or they're hurting in some way, shape or form. It destroys me. It, it really does. And as long as I know, you know, that person is, is happy and, you know, just, it just, it just brightens my day. It truly does. It brightens me and it makes me happy to know that someone else is happy. So that's just the way I am. It's just the way I am. So, um, so I've always kind of been behind on things. Um, so obviously, obviously with growth, you know, I'm still growing, right. You know, getting close to 30, I'm still growing. Right. So I'm not going to stay this, this short my whole life. Right. Gotta be, gotta be true, right? <laughs> um, I've always been behind on like my my teeth came in late. I my wisdom teeth came in super late. I got my wisdom teeth out like just a couple of years ago, and it was. And I've always been behind on stuff. I've been behind on on growing up. You can say, you know, in my in my in the episode with Dylan, you know, I, I talked about how he kind of was the one who brought me out and, and show me the world a little bit. So I guess you could say that I lived in a bubble a little bit, but it wasn't a bad thing. You know, it kept me out of trouble. Uh, it, it helped me find myself, um, you know, spending, not, it's not like, like I spent time only to myself. I was, I was out and playing with friends in the neighborhood and everything too, but I didn't like, I don't know, in high school, I didn't go out to, to parties or go behind the McDonald's and, and, sneak cigarettes or something crazy like that you know I, I skipped that stage you know I skipped that stage of life just never really appeased to me I guess but um but then even even after that just I've always I feel like I've always just been kind of a step behind in certain things you know even with with now with, with this podcast you know podcasts have kind of been a thing for a little while now and I'm kind of jumping on a little bit late People have already, you know, established themselves, and so on. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit late, and they, you know, all these these viewers and listeners, they have their their group of, you know, or their podcast they listen to, and so I'm trying to find my own. So, you know, I'm always kind of just been late to, to things. And speaking of being late to things, I'm literally late to everything. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm I I have a terrible habit of just being late to things. Um, even from, from when I was a kid, <laughs> there were so many, so many times that I almost missed the school bus. Like I'm literally running down the street as it's, as it's pulling up and I'm running down the street with this little kid just sprinting. And the, you could probably, I don't know why or how they waited for me most of the time. I guess they saw me coming and it, it had to have been hilarious to all the other kids just just sitting there watching me r sprint down the, the street towards the school bus like wait no don't leave oh my goodness but and then even now i'm i still still a bad habit i just i'm late to a lot of things not late but not necessarily late just not early and you know i've always been told and i used to have it in my head too that if you're not early you're late. You know, if you're on time, you're late. So it's just a bad habit. I really wish I could break and hopefully I will at some point, but, um, you know, I've always, it's just always been me. I just, it's not that I'm being lazy or just sitting around doing nothing. It's, it's that I always, I always feel like I have more time to do things than I actually do. Like I'm always trying to Oh, I've got time to still finish what I'm doing and then and then get ready and leave to go somewhere or do something. And it's never enough time. It's never enough time. It's terrible. It really is terrible. I've been told by numerous people, come on, man, you gotta fix this. And you know, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's a work in progress. And you know, we'll get there. We'll get there. So um, so going back to high school, I was I wasn't, I wasn't a, certainly wasn't a cool kid. You know, I wasn't one of the popular kids. I wasn't like a unpopular kid either. I got to use my words here properly. Um, I was just kind of in the middle, just kind of there, just going through, you know, I talked to people, you know, in school, but I wouldn't really, again, I wouldn't really do much after I wasn't going to crazy parties in high school and stuff like that. I was just kind of there. I was kind of just me, just BK walking through the hallway, 
just BK being weird and goofy. Um, you know, I had my group of friends and everything, but, um, you know, just, just, I wasn't, you know, super talkative. I wasn't getting in trouble, you know, being popular, getting in trouble, anything like that. It was just going, going through, man, just going through doing my studies, being right there, being right in the middle of everything. Um, it wasn't until, uh, college that I really broke out and, and broke out of my shell. You could say kind of found myself kind of showed myself to others. Um, and it's most in part to, to being invited to, to Sigma Tau Gamma, my, my fraternity. Um, you know, fraternities obviously have not necessarily a bad rep, but a, a stereotype or, or an image of, of what they are. And, you know, being inside of one, um, I can tell you that it's obviously, yeah, you're, you're with a group of guys. They're going to mess around and do stupid stuff and have, have parties and stuff. But most of it is just, just friendships, just friendships. You, you make these friendships with these guys that have similar values and you're, you're just, you're there for each other. They're like, they're brothers. You know, you're literally called brothers when you're in a fraternity and it's what they are, you know, and being around them kind of gave me my confidence, kind of gave me the opportunity to showcase who I was, you know, it allowed me to break out of my shell. Like I keep saying, you know, it just allowed me to be, be myself and not feel, I guess I could say ashamed, even though I said earlier that I didn't really get ashamed. It's not that I was ashamed. It's just that I, I guess I never knew who to, to show myself to, you know what I mean? I never knew, is this guy, you know, is this person interested in, in showing what I have to offer? And then, you know, there, I didn't care. I, I, you know, even if I knew they were, obviously I knew they, they appreciated me for who I was, but you know, it showed me that, you know, I can't. So I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So we're going to move on. <laughs> um, and then back out of college, um, I kind of slipped back a little bit. I kind of went back a little bit, um, when I, when I went to my first job out of college, which actually I, I'm still at, and I kind of was just back to the middle, kind of just going along with things. Um, just, just trudging through, just getting through day by day and not necessarily being who I want to be, not ne necessarily doing what I want to do. I don't have anything necessarily against my job, my day job, but it's not, it's not me. I mean, I mean I'm going to be honest. It's not, it's not what I want to do. It's not who I want to be. It's not how I want to portray myself to the world. Uh, so finally, you know, as I'm nearing 30 years old, I'm finally realizing, and I'm finally found, I, I feel like I finally found what I want to do with the, with the podcast and the streaming. And I've always, I've always wanted to make an impact on the world. I didn't necessarily know how to do it. You know, I've never been a super, super brave person to be like a firefighter. You know, I've never been, I've definitely never been into politics to be a politician or anything like that. Um, not really book smart enough. I use the term book smart because there's a book smart and there's a common sense smart. I'm very common sense smart, but I'm not so book smart. If you get what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm not really book smart enough to be like an astronaut or a engineer or something crazy like that so i've never really known how to make an impact on the world but one thing i've always had and always will have is a big heart that's never going to change it's always been me and now with this opportunity i feel like i have the chance to share it with the world you know i can make i feel like i can make a difference by sharing myself and you know just spreading love and making the world a better place by inspiring others to be quote unquote good you know just just spreading kindness showing the kindness can be spread showing that people are out there doing it and just continuing to to spread positive vibes and positivity into the world through myself and through my guests and through stories of of people doing amazing things is it's just it's so me, it's, it's completely and utterly who I am. I've always been that person to think, like I said earlier, I've always been that person to think about others first. So if I can reach even a handful of people and just inspire them to 
slightly change, slightly tweak that that dial in them to to go from being a little less selfish and being a little more selfless. I feel accomplished, and that's who I want to be. So I, I'm incredibly grateful to have this opportunity. And again, I thank everybody that's that supported me so far and pushed me along so far. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. No matter how how tough it gets, no matter how how the struggle continues, you know, or or doesn't continue, I'm gonna keep pushing. I'm gonna keep doing this, and I'm gonna keep trying to make a difference in the world. So that's me. That's a little bit about me. A little about your about your host, BK. That's who BK is. So, all right. So let's move back to last week's podcast where I touched on the NHL start. Uh, I mentioned that I was getting a little ahead of myself. I was getting a little ahead of myself saying that this season ended and the next one's going to start in like a week or two. Not quite, not quite. So it was announced that the next season, the 2020, 21 season is scheduled to start January 1st of 2021. So we still have a little while to go things. Hopefully they got to do some planning and make sure everything is safe and get everything figured out and how they want to do it. So it's probably going to be a little bit of a shorter season, but you know what, as long as they figure it out and they can have, if they have the same success that they did when they were in the bubble, goodness gracious, that's going to be awesome. You know, I really hope that they can figure it out and make it work. So um, just again, correction on the, on the date of the NHL start is now January 1st. So, so whoopsie poopsie. BK, BK was a little, little eager on that one, jumped the gun a little bit, but hopefully, you know, it's still coming. It's still coming soon. So we can be excited for that. Um, unfortunately, the NFL, again, man, they're having more COVID cases and postponements. Um, not doing so hot. They're still getting most games in, um, but it's just more and more cases are popping up and it kind of, you know, it makes people wonder what are we going to do here to fix it? You know, how are we going to cut these down? Got to do something. Got to do something before it gets bad. Um, so they are, it's good news. Good news. They are meeting to, to, you know, try to figure out ways to solve this. They're, 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 they, they announced that they're having plan, you know, they're coming into agreement, try to figure out ways to, to remedy this, this issue. So hopefully they can get it figured out and we can continue to have the NFL season, um, keep that football you know so many people are, are happy that football are back is back so you don't want to don't want to lose that definitely don't want to lose that so um now we we have moved um past the nhl season you know the, the postseason's over we have our stanley cup winner in the tampa bay lightning it's now the free agency and you know the off season so we got free agency and all kinds of trades and stuff going on back to me being excited about this stuff. I can literally talk for hours and hours about this stuff, but I won't, I won't, I promise. Okay. I'll keep it short because I know not everybody wants to hear all this boring stuff, but there are some things I do want to touch on that are awesome. Um, specifically Matt Murray being gone for Pittsburgh. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yes, our goalie Matt Murray for Pittsburgh is gone. He has been traded. Um, I know there are a lot of people that are very happy about that. Um, not that the fact that he was the worst goalie in the world. It's just that he wasn't doing that well anymore. Um, and then we have this other guy, Tristan Jari, who kind of just, he's better. Uh, you know, he, he visually on the ice seems better. Um, younger. So contract wise, it'll be a little bit cheaper and all this stuff with Murray being a, a Stanley cup winner in the past, you know, he, he's going to demand more money. So, it's just better all around to, to keep Jari as opposed to Murray. So a lot of people didn't care for Murray. I had my, my, my times where I, I, he frustrated me, but all in all, you know, back in the day when he won those, those two cups with us, you were, and most people were cheering for him then, you know, everybody was happy. I think a lot of people dislike him because of how he took Fleury's place and people just absolutely loved Mark Andre Fleury. The dude was amazing. He was absolutely, he was a hit in the locker room. Everybody loved him in the locker room. Everybody, all the fans loved him. He was funny. He always, he was kind of like me. He always had a smile on his face. He was always just brightening up the room. He was flashy. He was, he was a good goaltender. He was a great person and a good goaltender. And when Matt Murray kind of 
bumped him out of his job. People didn't really care for Matt Murray. So going in, you know, he, Murray had it tough. He didn't have the, the people's, you know, back behind him. So um, all in all, you know, I wish Matt Murray the best of luck. I really do. Um, never had, he never said anything bad about Pittsburgh. You know, he never had any bad things, even when people were ripping on him. I never heard him say anything bad or any, you know, any, any talk of, of him ripping back against us or anything like that. So, you know, some, sometimes people just need a change of scenery, you know, just get a fresh start somewhere else. They might go back to their, to their old form. You know, you, sometimes you just don't, you're not jiving with the jiving like that word not jiving with the people in your locker room or, or the people in management it's just you go to you go to the the rink every day and you're just not you're not as happy as you were and you just don't you're that's why you know that could be why your play kind of diminishes you know so sometimes a change of scenery is what people need so you know again i wish wish matt mary the best of luck in in ottawa i hope things go well for him um and then hopefully you know with tristan jari the new man in pittsburgh Hopefully, hopefully things go well with that. So um, speaking of, of Fleury, uh, there has been some talk of, of him coming back to Pittsburgh. I don't really think it'll happen. I obviously I hope it will. He was my absolute favorite penguin of all time. I love the dude to death. I just don't think it'll work out. Um, with the penguins cutting down salary cap, you know, it's been a conscious effort from management and ownership for, the demand of, of our salary cap to, to drop. So we're getting rid of some of these people with high, high contracts. Flurry, Flurry has a high contract. You know, he's, he's getting paid like seven mil a year. And for him to come to Pittsburgh and be a backup to, to Jari, because Jari, Jari's going to be a starter. You know, if, even if Flurry comes back, he might get, you know, it might get split time and everything, but Jari's probably going to be the main guy for to pay a backup $7 million, even if it's Mark andre Fleury, it just would be tough to see. It would be tough to see. So I, I don't think it'll happen. Again, I would absolutely love for it to happen. I hope it does, but I just, I don't think it will. So, um, and then with this, with these free agency and, and these trades that are happening, you know, right now, I'm in, I'm in, in joy. I'm in, in my happy place right now. I, this is again, stuff that I love. <clears throat> um, just the wheeling and dealing. It's, it's crazy to think, cause these are people, you know, these are people that are getting traded to these different teams. They're, they're having to pick up their lives and move to a different town. It's crazy. You know, it's crazy to think about, but for me, it's exciting. It's exciting to see how these managers can switch their rosters around to change them, to hopefully improve them. You know, it's all about improvement. It's always, always about getting better and improving so so i'm excited i'm excited about this whole time so um and then there were just a couple people you know that i wanted to, to mention um henrik Lund henrik lundquist uh he was the new york rangers goaltender for for many many years uh, he's up there in age never never uh got a stanley cup in new york um he finally reached the end of his contract and went to free agency and was signed by, unfortunately, the Washington Capitals. And as much as I hate the Capitals, I am, I am happy for Lundquist and his opportunity to hopefully chase the, you know, the, the chance for a Stanley Cup with, with Washington. Um, you know, anytime you see a veteran who's been in the league for a long time and they just perform so, so well, but they just haven't quite got that cup, it's exciting to see. And you kind of have to hope, you know, kind of have to root for them a little bit, you know, you do. And it's hard. It's hard not to, it's hard not to, even if you, they're on a team that you don't like, like I said, with you know, being the Washington capitals, it's just the thought of, you know, they worked their butts off for how many years to, to try to get this day in the cup and didn't quite get it. They got this new opportunity on a new team that hopefully gives them the chance to, to get it. You know, the penguins did it last year with, with Patrick Marlowe. He was on, San Jose uh, Sharks for, for so many years and was heck of a player, heck of a player there. Just never happened. Just never happened. So the Penguins picked him up last year in the hopes of, of getting him his cup. Didn't happen. Didn't happen, unfortunately. As we know, Penguins totally botched that. But, you know, just hearing these, these veterans with the opportunity to get it, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's exhilarating. You know, you got to root for him. You got to root for him. So hopefully. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that though. Hopefully Lundquist gets it. And then it would mean the Washington wins it. 
Okay, I'm torn now. We're gonna move on because I don't know what to what to think now. Okay, yeah. And then lastly, there's there's another goaltender in the NHL that I want to touch on, uh, Robin Leonard. He is the goaltender for the uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights. Just signed a, a nice contract to stay there. Um, this dude has absolutely been inspiring. Um, he has come forth saying that he has battled mental um, battle. He has had he's been battling mental health for for many many years. Uh, he's had struggles with bipolar disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder (ADHD), and post traumatic stress disorder. So and actually um, addiction issues as well. You know, with with drugs and alcohol. And so he's obviously he's had his struggles, um, but he's come forth and he said, you know, that, uh, you know, I, I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to, I want to fix it. I want to live a better life. And he did, you know, in 2018, he went to rehab. Um, he started getting his life together and look where he is now. You know, he's a, he's a heck of a goaltender in the national hockey league. And just thinking about it, you know, you have to be, mentally strong being a goaltender in, in the national hockey league it's all mental like you you give up a goal and if you sit there and you say to yourself oh this was all on me uh am i going to make the next save or if you get in your own head i know you know in sports in general that kind of plays a part but for a goaltender in any sport it's you've got to be mentally strong you have to be so it's kind of crazy that the dude was, was battling so much you know mentally but he was able to be such a goaltender a great goaltender for so many years you know, and for, for the teams that signed him to give them, him the opportunity to, to play for them, I got to applaud them too. Cause a lot of teams probably looked at him and said, dude's mental, you know, mentally unstable. I'm not, we, we can't have him as a goaltender. It's not going to work out. It's, it's a weakness. And for teams to give him the opportunity and, and he's proven himself to be a very good goaltender and battle through all his issues. Got to applaud the dude. You have to, you got to applaud the dude. I mean, he's had fantastic goalie numbers, um, you know, save percentage, goals against, all these he wins, everything. Anything that's good in, in NHL, all these numbers that are good as a goaltender, he's, he's been up there, top of the league almost every year. So he, he was awarded, finally, uh, in 2019, he was awarded the Bill, Master, Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy, which is awarded to the uh, National Hockey League player who best exemplifies the qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship and dedication to hockey i mean spot on spot on there's a lot of people out there that are probably battling issues with like that and for him to come forth and say you know i'm battling these things but i went and i fought them you know i went and i went to rehab and i i figured my my crap out you know i figured my shit out and you know i'm here now you know i can achieve anything i can work through this you know he had support he had people there for him and he's here, you know, he's doing, he's doing what he loves and which is playing hockey. So don't ever feel alone. Don't ever feel like you can't do things. Um, and we're going to get to that in a second here. So Robin Leonard, man. And, and you know, as I think about it uh, in the playoffs this last year, after a series is over, they, they typically have a handshake line, you know, where they congratulate, you know, each other on a, on a good series, you know, well-fought series and I just remember seeing uh, Robin Leonard, just almost every single person that he came up to, just having a, a short conversation and just being so friendly with every single person. Most guys just walk through line, you know, oh, yeah, good job. Hey, yeah, good job. Hey, yeah, good job. But Robin was, was every single person. He's like, hey, man, excellent job. You did your very best out there. I appreciate you. You, you worked really hard and I hope you, you know, have success next year. And it's just every single person he went up to, he had a smile on his face and he was just so friendly. It was awesome. It was amazing to see somebody out there. You know, I think you know, even when he lost, even when he lost his series, he went out and was still the same thing was just, you know, th congratulations, man. Just thanks for a great series. You really played great. You did awesome. I appreciate you. You know, just every, it was amazing. It was just amazing. You could just see it on his face that he was so happy to be there in the National Hockey League and just appreciate all his fellow uh, combatants, you know, all his fellow players. And, you know, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So I applaud Robin Leonard for, for what he's been through and how, who he's been able to become not only as a player, but as a person, absolutely amazing. So 
and that brings into the next uh, thing where World Mental Health Day was Saturday, the 10th of October. And with World Mental Health Day, it's a day to just recognize people that are going through struggles mentally. Um, just kind of try to let them know that they're not alone, you know, that they can be open about it, you know, that they can ask, you know, they can seek for help. They can ask people for help. They can talk to people. Um, there's, there's a saying, you know, just a simple thing that just secrets are toxic. It's true. It's true. You know, just, just be open about anything you're going through. Um, whether or not it be an issue, whether or not it just be a happy thing, like, you know, like we, like, like I keep talking about with bright connections, don't keep those good deeds in, bring them out. Let me hear them. But seriously, um, you know, don't, don't be afraid to, to seek help. If you're having mental issues, don't be afraid to talk to somebody, even if it's not about your mental issues, just talk to somebody, just find somebody to talk to, talk to, talk, you know, find somebody who will, who's open to listening. Um, you know, I'm one of those people. If, if you, you want somebody to talk to, talk to me by all means, please. But, you know, find somebody to talk to just, again, doesn't have to be about your issues. Just talk about life. Just talk about what makes you happy. Talk about music, talk about sports, talk about uh, movies or hopscotch or anything, coloring, uh, picking your nose, anything, just talk to people. We're, we're very social creatures. You know, we're not meant to be alone and not talk to people and not be around people. We're very social creatures. Um, you know, obviously there are people out there that are, are introverts and, and aren't good at talking to people, but still anyone, even if you have those kind of issues and you got to think being around people has got to, it's got to be helpful to you. So if you're going through issues with, with mental health, just, you know, seek out help. Don't be, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Um, you can always seek comfort in, in talking to somebody, you know, get help, talk to somebody, do what you can. Don't be ashamed. Absolutely do not be ashamed if you're going, going through issues. So, um, and that kind of plays into the part of us treating everyone with kindness. You know, you just never know what, what people are going through. People can put on a front where they, they appear happy outside, but they're going through a lot of struggles, you know, in their heads or just in life in general, you know, you just never know. You just never know. And if you spend that, that, second or two just to to say hi to them or, or talk to them for a couple of minutes or just see how they're doing and see if they'll open up to you just the importance of being kind and, and caring can absolutely change somebody's life it truly truly can it truly truly can it's and it's a such a simple thing i keep saying it but it's so true it's so incredibly true it's so easy to do it's so easy to do it doesn't take much to, to wave at somebody and say, hi, it doesn't put your hand up. I'll teach you right now. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you for asking. You know, that's it. It's simple. I got, you know, I got, I have a guy I, I work with. Um, he's, he's a funny dude. Anytime you, you ask him, you know, you say, Hey Tom, how you doing today? Or, you know, I usually ask you first. He, he, anytime he sees you, he, he calls me coach too. So it's funny, but he says, Hey coach, how you doing today? And I said, doing well, Tom, how are you? And his, all his response is always, always well, but thanks for asking. You know, it's just, it's a simple thing, but you know, you can, you can appreciate that. He always takes the time to ask how you're doing. And he, he always, even if he's doing well, even if he just says he's doing well, he might be going through his own struggles here or there. It's just the, the fact of, of interacting with somebody and checking on them and, and showing that you care about how they are it means the world. It really does. It means the world. So be kind, be caring, do little things for people, make their day. You can change their life. You know, people that are going through struggles, they might be, might be thinking of, unfortunately, might be thinking of bad options. Okay, we'll go with, we'll go with that. So they might be thinking of bad options. They just might have had enough with all the struggles they're going through. And you know, you might 
just again, you might just change their life, man. You might just change their life just just by saying hi and just being positive and, and giving them a smile just might turn them around from from going over that cliff, going over that that edge where they say, you know what? Okay, that guy was that guy was was nice to me and he, and he showed some kindness to me and, he, and maybe it's not so bad. Maybe the world's not so bad. It's not. It's not. Obviously, there's 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 some bad in the world. There's always going to be. There always has been. There always will be. You know, some some not so great people. Or not some not so great things going on in the world. Not so great events. Anything. You know what I mean? But there's so many amazing stories. There's so many amazing people out there. So don't ever give up. You can always push forward. And don't be afraid to reach out to somebody whether you're the one going through struggles or you're the one who sees somebody going through struggles, be kind to each other, be kind to each other. We're all human. We're all in this together. We can all, we can all do our part. So, so I want to move to lacrosse. Um, lacrosse is obviously very important to me. And with me being extremely busy right now, I have actually pondered not doing it this year. And Right now, it's only one one day a week for a couple hours, um, but eventually it will be you know multiple days a week for for hours. And you know, just how am I going to do it? And as I've gone out there last couple of weeks and seeing the kids and just teaching them and just getting back into it, I just there's I don't think there's any way I could just not do it. It just means the world to me. Um, again, with with knowing the impact I have on their lot on their lives. Um, you know, obviously you, you have these kids that don't want to want to talk back. You know, you say, you understand they don't, they're, just, they're quiet. Don't say yes, coach or, or anything like that. But I've always known that even if they're quiet, more, more times than not, they're, they're still taking it to heart. They're still taking your words um, to heart. And, and whether it be about lacrosse or about life, they're, 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 taking your information and, and absorbing it. And for me to not do that would be crazy. So I definitely have to, I definitely have to stick with it and keep going lacrosse. And it's just, it means the world to me. So if there's something out there that you are thinking about doing that you're just not sure if you have time for, or not sure if you can give it a shot, just, just go for it, man. Keep, keep pushing, keep going for it make time for it. If it's important to you, make time. If it's important for you, that's the same thing goes for, for people in your life. You know, if you got somebody that's important to you, reach out to them, reach out to them, see how they're doing. Don't, don't, you know, don't forget about them. Don't forget about them. Let them know that you still care. Let them know that you still care. It means the world. Though. Again, it's just a simple text, simple call, simple like on their Facebook page, you know, whatever, something, something. Interact with people. Interact. Um, so with lacrosse, there's and and just thinking about it in the past, some of the kids that I know that I've reached, but have always reached me. There's there's one kid in particular, and I know even to this day he still he still follows me on social media and everything. And this kid was absolutely you know I, I don't want to take favoritism, but this kid was was just probably my my favorite favorite kid that I ever coached and this kid um, hopefully will continue to be part of my life and I hopefully will, will still continue to be part of his life as well um, <clears throat> so I just want to touch on the story of him um, Zach talking about you um, this kid Zach uh, when he first came in and he first was trying out lacrosse I'm going to be honest not the best which most people are you know most people when they first start out of sport, they're not, not very good. You know, they're not very good. It takes work. It takes practice. There's some kids, obviously, that, that naturally are, are you know, have the natural ability to be good at every sport, which is crazy. But, um, you know, this kid was, this kid's act was, wasn't so great. But right away, from the very start, I could see the determination, the willingness to accept all information that I gave to him. Uh, he asked questions. He asked, can I stay after practice and, and do a couple things with him? Uh, 
and and that started that started in the, the first year and then ended in the last year that he that he moved on to high school um he would still always say coach you want to stay after practice and, and you know mess around shoot on me or whatever he, he ended up being a goalie he started out playing in the field and he ended up being a goalie so he he, he would always ask me you know can you stay after and and, and shoot on me a little bit and it wasn't necessarily that we were working that hard and and getting crazy technical you know on what we need to do it was more of us just talking and saying and we can do this better we can do this better he was giving some feedback to me I was giving feedback to him and so again back to this kid when he started out he wasn't great but he had the fire and the determination and absorbed everything that I said and as the years progressed, he continued to get better and better and better and better. And he switched to goaltender and all of a sudden things clicked and he was just, he was really good. He was really good at goaltender. Um, and obviously he moved on to high school now and I, I need to check in with him actually and see how everything's going. But um, this kid, the way he went about, the, one, they, the way he went about everything, you could tell not only in lacrosse, but in life too, the way he went about things. Um, me knowing the impact I had on his life absolutely means the world to me. And he's, he's, you know, he's mentioned it. His mother's mentioned it to me. Um, but I don't think he realizes the impact he had on my life either. And some of these kids that I've coached, uh, they mean the world to me and they really do. And so Zach, thank you for all you've done for me as well. Um, I'm honestly kind of getting choked up. <laughs> what a loser, right? No. Um, but he just had, he had the right, the right attitude. And if I can instill that, you know, these morals and these values and these kids to have the right attitude, not only about the sport they're playing, but about life, I would be accomplishing more than I ever imagined. I really would. So I encourage you guys to do the same. Obviously, if you're not working with kids, you don't like kids as much as me, find another way. Find another way to impact somebody's life and, and change it for the better. You know, you can't. You, you can't. You just have to figure out, you know, how you can and, you know, if you want to talk about it, we want to want to discuss it with me, you know, we'll see if we can figure it out together. But so that was my little cross story. Uh, I wanted to also talk on a couple of uh, TV shows that have uh, been really cool to me. So there's one that gets overlooked a lot. It's brain games. First off, it's cool because it looks like Brian, obviously. People get it confused all the time. Brian and Brain. What? But the show is just wildly mesmerizing. It's crazy. Some of these things that... It go, it, so basically, the, the show goes into in-depth on like how your brain works and how it... it picks up things and how it puts it back and how it just transfers everything to the body. And, and then it kind of does these activities that kind of show you like how your brain reacts to certain things. And, and if you're, you know, if you're like dominant on one side of your brain, as opposed to the other, you know, like one side, your creative side, one side, you're like mathematical or, or, intellectual side and it, again the show is really cool I don't, I don't it's hard to explain but it does these activities that just inter, you can you can interact, interact with and get you thinking get you get you it kind of honestly get your mind blown i'm not gonna lie you watch the show and you're just like what how what what you kidding me and it's really cool it's really cool. And it's, 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 what's also cool is that you can, obviously you can interact with it, but you're, you're, you're thinking, you're doing a lot of critical thinking and you're, you're being involved with the TV show instead of kind of just sitting there like a potato, you know, 
just sitting there like potato just watching a tv show so i think that's cool i think it's really cool so check it out if you haven't checked it out before and then there's another tv show that i wanted to bring up it's called it's no longer uh running and only had two seasons which was really depressing um the show was really really good really really good uh it's called it, it was called god friended me and i know what you're thinking oh great he's gonna start talking about a religious show this and that no all right so listen just bear with me bear with me calm down i won't do that to you okay the show was about a young gentleman by the name of miles who and go figure he was actually an atheist in the show so he was an atheist didn't believe in god but he got friend, uh, a friend request from from on Facebook from an account claiming to be God. And this account was kind of nudging him and giving him clues on other people in necessarily maybe in his life or complete strangers. But anyway, this guy, the whole show was about Miles helping people. I mean, it was it was amazing some of these some of these stories dude i got so choked up i got so incredibly choked up some of these stories they were crazy absolutely crazy i mean this guy completely changed people's lives by inserting himself into theirs um you know some people were were rejective at first you know they're like what are you doing this this stranger why are you trying to get into my life and 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 you know mess around with things go away and he persisted and he just he kept you know something bad is going on in your life i want to i want to help this show was absolutely amazing so anyway the god account as you know as he was known was was sending him hints and clues and like i said nudges on how he can help these people he would get like a, a person's name and he would have to try to do some research on who they were and what happened to them and why they might be having this issue now and how he could help resolve it. And they were, I mean, they were like big time events in these people's lives too. And he, he went out of his way to help these people. And, uh, you know, kind of played into the show was, was whether or not this was actually God doing this, or if it was just some, some crazy hacker who was, had a, had a thing out for helping people. And what was cool was that, the way they they played out the show is you didn't you, you never really knew and it was all on what you believed you know and that's what's cool that's what i find cool about religion um whether or not you believe and somebody else does or does not believe everyone has has their own thing and, and, and that's fine you know I'm a, I'm a strong believer i'm a strong believer in religion I have my religion, but I'm never going to try to force it on other people. I'm never going to say, you know, if you don't believe in the same thing I do, I hate you. That's just not, that's not what my religion even is. But and that's what's cool about it is you can take your own thoughts and your own opinions on it and, and make them your own. So what this show was so cool about it is it, if you believe in God, you kind of leaned a little bit towards that's God sending him, sending him these, these hints to help this person, you know, help these people. But on the other side, if you know you don't necessarily believe in God or a higher power, or whatever you want to call it, it's just it's this hacker doing this, you know, and and giving them these hints to help people. And it was kind of like the debate back and forth, like, is it God or is it this other person? It was really cool. It was really, really cool. But the whole the whole thing behind the show was was that this this kid, Miles, was was helping these people and he had no reason behind it he had no reason to do it he wasn't getting anything out of it he just wanted to he just wanted to help people you know he, he was he, he had to go through stuff in his own life and and he just you know necessarily maybe didn't want to see people go through it you know the same thing or it's just who he was it's just who he was he just wanted to see people succeed he wanted to see people happy and he had no benefit from it you know no no obligation to it a you know there were times where he's where he debated you know should i stop helping these people and he, he eventually came back and just said i can't i can't leave this thought and i can't leave this this opportunity to just help people and 
it was a, just a really cool, really cool show. Um, and it just, it plays into this whole, into the whole Bright Connections. It's just being able to help people for no reason. It's amazing. Yeah. It, it, again, I understand sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's tough for, for, you know, for a lot of people to go out of their comfort zone and, and do something without the thought of getting something back. I know it's tough. It can be. But if you can keep trying to turn, again, with that dial, just keep trying to turn that dial a little bit more towards that. Just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying to do for people whether or not you're getting something, in, you know, in return. You know, it's tough, but to me, it's what makes the world go around. Being selfless, thinking about others. It's what's keeping, it's what's keeping everything ticking. So keep trying, keep trying. Do what you can, do what you can, okay? All right, so finally, we're gonna move to the bright stories of the week. So kind of having some, you know, repeat people here. I wanna see, I wanna see some, submissions from some other people here guys come on i again i keep saying that i know you're doing things don't be afraid to share them don't seriously don't i want to hear them even if they're they're little things i don't care and nobody else cares either the whole thing is is sharing and showing that everyone's out here doing things and, and we can continue to do it and it might inspire somebody to to do the same thing for the next person you know so, all right. Anyway, uh, the first one was from my mother. Um, you know, as I, as I did the challenge a couple of weeks ago, I, I submitted that challenge to everyone to go out this week and, or that week and do something, just, just challenge yourself and do something. So she did, she did. She said, you know, I, I obviously can't go out and visit people. So I decided to just call a bunch of people, you know, relatives or whoever. And she was like, I was on the phone for hours, like basically a whole day, just talking to people, just seeing how they're doing checking in and you know i'm sure it meant meant the world to those people whether it was relatives or friends or whoever it meant the world and i'm sure it meant the world of my mom too so take the time reach out see how people are doing check in check in you know easy thing to do easy thing to do uh then second story was um from my dad uh, he, he's been taking out, uh, their neighbor's garbage every week for like years. He said it only started recently, but I don't believe him. I know it's been years because I remember in the past him doing it, but you know, my neighbors or their neighbors, you know, very elderly, 92, I believe. And, you know, doesn't walk very well and whatnot. And he just, you know, just, I'm going to go, I'm going to take, take her garbage out for her every week, bring her garbage can in, in the morning simple thing, simple thing. You know, she, you know, she might get hurt going out there. She might, something might happen. I'm sure it just means the world, you know, it just, again, something little. And, and she just looks at, looks at him and just says, Oh, you know what? You know what? That's really nice of you to do that for me. I appreciate that. And, and, you know, you know, I'm sure she, um, she really appreciates it. And I know she does. And I know she does. So, and then last story, um, again, is from my cousin, Kristen, who this time switching the tables a little bit, she, it was something that had, that she had happened to her um, this week. And she said that her, her boss brought in coffee and one of her coworkers brought in donuts and the day before their break, uh, you know, it was just a, just a little pick me up, just a little pick me up with how, how crazy things have been at, at school with all the changes going on with the pandemic and everything. Uh, just a little pick me up and everybody just appreciated it. She said, you know, she super appreciated it. Everyone was, was just, th just the thought of thinking of somebody else, just bringing in coffee, bringing in donuts, just something like that. Brightens that day, brightens that week. Something nice. Cost a couple of dollars. Ooh, you know, whoop, whoop de doo So no big deal. No big deal, but a big deal to, to those involved. So no big deal to do, but huge, huge impact. So... Thank you guys, mom, dad, Kristen, for, for sharing the stories. I appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to share it and hopefully again, can 
inspire people to, to do these little things and share them as well. So we can continue to, to keep the ball rolling, keep the ball rolling. So, all right, that's about it. I've talked long enough. Hopefully, hopefully you stayed entertained and hopefully you got to go and get to know me a little bit better. You know, if you didn't, but thanks again for everyone who's, who's supported me so far it really truly means the world to me. And hopefully I can keep you entertained and inspired enough to stick around longer and we can continue to feed off each other and continue to make a difference. And, you know, I can't do this without you. So keep, keep giving me feedback. Keep giving me things you want to hear, you want to see. Keep giving me those bright stories. Um, you know, I, I, I'm so happy to see when, when people submit these stories. It really makes, it makes my day. Even before I read them, it makes my day. So keep going out there each and every week and continuing to just try to better yourself and, and, and better other people involved in your life. So thanks again for everything. Hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful and bright week. Enjoy. Take care. And um, don't forget to, to go to our social media, you know, social media links and hit us up with the follow subscription, um, you know, on YouTube. I appreciate it. Thanks again. Have a wonderful week. Take care.